Well, good Thursday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Hope everybody's doing great today. I am excited. We have... Um, some crazy stuff going on. We have the Washington Commanders last stand against the Chicago Bears that if they don't win tonight, you can pretty much look at this is going to be crashing and burning. Uh, that you can see that Ron Rivera and crew will probably end up getting fired maybe before the end of the season and so on. And we also know there's a lot of pressure that is on the Washington Commanders front office as in Dan Snyder who apparently has hired a private investigator to investigate the other NFL owners. This is one of those ones that if you're going to take me out, I'm going to burn this whole mother humper down. That is what Dan Snyder basically is putting across the deck here, that he literally is going to say, I know where the bodies are buried. You come after me, I'm going to go ahead and heat, hit every single one of you. So that may end up getting the NFL owners with a gun to their head to literally say, you know, uh, maybe Dan's not so bad. Yeah. But anyway, we'll have more on that a little bit later. Right now, we're dealing with the Dallas Cowboys versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Hey, what's up, squirrel? Damn squirrels out here getting all the damn acorns. The Eagles now are six and a half point favorites. Six and a half point favorites. We're hearing people, you know, we, we literally, I think if the Cowboys were somehow some way to get a victory, I don't know that Eagles Nation could take it with Cooper Rush. I, I don't think that they could take it. I, I, I'm just saying, I don't think they could take it. But we'll see. I was supposed to be doing a, a video last night with, you know, Philly 500, but Philly, of course, um, was scared to come on last night. Hopefully, we'll see if he comes on tonight with me egging him on. We'll, we'll see. We will see what happens with that. Um, but I, I have a feeling he'll be here. Um, for the Cowboys, I have, hmm, hmm. I was doing some numbers work, and I'm an amateur at this as opposed to the guys at Pro Football Focus. Pro Football Focus. You know, you know Skip, those guys, they, they watch a lot of football. Um, but I was looking, and, and the thing is, is there's probably all this work is probably already done. I just don't know how to get it. That's, that's Brother Ross. But I was sitting here thinking about the game this weekend, Cooper Rush and this offense, what they're going to need to do. And looking at the Eagles' offense, okay, the Eagles' offense against the Lions, they scored 38 points against the 32nd um, scoring defense. The average points that the Lions give up is 34 points. So they scored four points more than the team's average. When they played the Minnesota Vikings, the, the 14th scoring defense, they scored 24. So versus Minnesota's, uh, 20.4 points per game that they give up. They scored, you know, 3.6 more points um, against the commanders at the 27th rated scoring defense. They scored 24. They were actually less than what the commanders normally give up, which is 25.6 against the Jags, which are the fifth rated defense. Uh, that are only averaging giving up 16. They scored 29. So they were plus 13 points over that. And the Cardinals, um, they scored 20. And um, actually, I messed up on that number. They scored 20 against the Cardinals. So it's only 4.5 point, uh, excuse me, 4.5 points uh, more per game. Excuse me, less. I'm sorry, more against the Cardinals. So that comes out to about five points more per game that they've been averaging over what teams have been giving up, which is good. I mean, I, I can't say, you know, you're scoring more more points than the average against teams. So when you look at that, you take then our Cowboys, which are giving up 14.4 points, right? You add five to it, then that should say that the Eagles should score about 19 and a half points. 
roughly, you know, if you go by the averages, it won't be 19 and a half. It'd be, you know, like 19 or 20 or 21, but somewhere in that neighborhood. So for our Cowboys, we need to score about 21 points or more in this game against the Eagles. And looking at the flip side of this, this is where it's not good. You know, we're, we're all in love with Cooper Rush and everything he's doing. Cooper Rush has done an incredible job. But here's the problem for us. And I can, you know, the Tampa Bay game, we were horrendous. You know, Tampa Bay is only giving up 16.5 points a game. We only got three. So even if we take out the Tampa Bay game, against Cincy, um, Cincy gives up 17.8, we got 17. Against New York, they give up 18.3, and we scored 16. Um, against Washington, they give up 25.6. We scored 25. Against the Rams, they're giving up 23.2, and we get 22. So we end up with a negative 4.75 points per game, less than what that de- the, the opposing defense is giving up. Nearly five points a game, our offense is performing that much less than the other teams. So if we take the Eagles, what they're giving up, that says that we should score about 17.6 points. Now, this is where I have to say numbers sometimes need to be bullshit because it's not exactly equal. When you look at our schedule, um, Tampa Bay, you got to look at it and say Tampa Bay is going to be a playoff team. Tampa Bay is going to be a playoff team. Uh, with everybody, with Carolina, with the, the, the Falcons, and, of course, the um, Saints, they're going to win the division. And you got Tom Brady. That's a playoff team. Cincinnati. Cincinnati is still, I, I know they're two and three, but they're still one of the better teams in their division. Um, we know that the Browns stink. The Ravens are pretty good. I think that Cincy is still has a chance in that division. The Giants are four and one, and they have a great defense um, right there. So, and you look at it right now, teams that start out four and one have a 91% chance of being in the uh, playoffs. Washington, well, we know Washington is crashing and burning. And you have the defending Super Bowl champion Rams that I think will be able to turn it around, but they're still pretty good teams. So when you look at that versus the Eagles playing the Lions, the Vikings are the quality win there, um, the Commanders, which are terrible, and the Cardinals that are you know not that great on defense right now, only scoring 20 points. The Jags are really good on defense, but they still leave a lot to be desired. You should be able to beat up on the Lions if you are that Super Bowl aspiration team and in the team that they say you are. So for us, we need to really have a great defensive performance. Our defense has been great, 14.4 points a game. You can't complain about that. But we're going to need to get probably a little bit more from our offense. And is that a possibility? I think it is. I think our offense has actually been getting better and better and better. The problem that we're going to have going forward, the longer that Cooper Rush plays – the longer the Cooper Rush plays, the more you start to learn his strengths and weaknesses and how to counter it. It's kind of like when RG3 and the pistol offense came out in 2012. It was something totally different than they had seen. You could look at, say, the Wildcat when Miami first started running it. They were with Ronnie Brown. They were killing people. But by the time you had an offseason, people figured out how to counteract those things and how to defense them. Now with Cooper Rush, with five games under his belt, now you can start looking at the film and finding out where are his bad throws, where is he weak at, what are the things that he can't do. And you're going to see that the sledding is going to get tougher, especially when you play against the Eagles on the road in a hostile environment. This is where play calling is going to matter. Turnovers are going to matter. This is going to be a heavyweight fight. Mistakes will kill you. And... It's really going to go down to me. Who wants it more? And I believe we really need to be able to run the ball. Let's listen to NFL AM this morning, Good Morning Football, um, and see how they feel about the matchup. 
down to stopping the run. I said yesterday when Dallas hands the ball off 25 times or more undefeated this year. The Eagles secondary has been balling. They brought in James Bradbury on one side. They already had big play Slay on the other side. We talked about uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, him coming over to trade from New Orleans. You Marcus talked about Epps, Marcus baby. Epps in the beginning of the season as a young guy who's going to break out. They have to trust those guys. Commit everybody else to the run. You already have Fletcher Cox, Hassan Reddick, Nicobe Dean up there, Hargrave, Edwards. Trust these guys to go in there and stop the run. If you have to send pressure, you have to stack the box and put all eight guys up there. Do what you have to do to stop the run. Trust your secondary to cover those guys. Force Cooper Rush, Kyle's guy, to beat you with the ball in his hands, having to make pass after pass for the Cowboys to win the game. Commit to the run. Trust and you the secondary. And you know why they can do that is because you have guys like, and I'm going to give him his due. I know you want to call him Slay, but Darius Demetrius Slay <laughs> Jr. Yeah, you get all four right there because right now in the NFL, and I said this before, in order for them to win, the Cowboys have to play better than a fourth-ranked defense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, this feels like a, like a, like a big one, and, and it feels like a... Like a, like a UFC fight. Yeah. Because of the trenches. Mm -hmm. like, I don't think there's a better defensive line right now in all of football than, than the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a better offensive line than the Philadelphia Eagles. Interesting. Feels I like, like a, I don't know, a boxing match. Can, mm. can we get this thing going with a little hype, maybe? A boxing. Yeah. A poster! It's time! The Brawl on Broad Street. Okay. I like it. Sunday night. That is Demarcus Lawrence, that's Dorrance Armstrong, that's Micah Parsons, that's Jordan Maialata, that's Lane Johnson, and that's Jason Kelsey. This is it. I don't, I mean, you've got skill position players coming out of all angles, you've got corners. This is going to be decided with that defensive line if they can manhandle the best offensive line in football. I mean, you're talking the best D line, the best O line clashing. Ground and pound? Ground and pound. You're talking about coaching. Dan Quinn sending his boys. And then you've got on the offense, Jeff Stoutland, the best offensive line coach in the league. Maialata, of course, missed last week. Mm -hmm. And they missed him. I really do think so. I think the, the Cardinals are flying off the edge on that one. Um, the hope is Maialata's back. Mm. And then if that's the case, maybe someone silences Micah Parsons. This is old school football. I know we're expecting big points and offense. And all that. This thing might be like 13-9. Mm. It might be one in the trenches. And it might be the, the five unit. Two guards, two tackles in the center versus the other five unit. Mm. Four men coming down and the roaming linebacker. Give us a moment on Dorrance Ar Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong out of Kansas uh -huh. has been playing outstanding uh -huh. as a defensive lineman. Of course, you got your two big stars, uh -huh. the highly paid Lawrence, and then the, sure. the second-year star in Parsons. Okay. Yeah. Armstrong is the wild card. He's been having an awesome season. Uh, I would just say this to the Philadelphia Eagles. You're 5-0. and You're the toast of the town. You're the toast of the league. If you lose tonight at home to uh, Cooper Rush, you guys ain't squat. You, you ain't nothing. <laughs> you ain't nothing. You lose to your arch rivals at home, and they flip the table. And it's not Dak, who, you know, who's beaten you guys senseless recently, too. I'm talking about Cooper Rush. And I would just say this. We, we've shouted out the secondary a few times. This dude has not thrown an interception in professional football this season. You got to go get one. Slay. If you're Slay, you're not Darius. You just Slay. Go get an interception from Cooper Rush. All right, go get one. My guy, Gardner Johnson, maybe a little conversation with Cooper Rush. Do what you do. Make your magic. No one does it better than you. Because if this dude comes in here and beats you guys and knocks you to five and one, I'm telling you, shallow end stuff. They still got you. I love this Eagles team. I love how they're built. I love the linemen. I love the secondary. Howie Roseman, this is, I think this is his masterpiece. You lose to Cooper Rush at home, to, <laughs> you're going to have to squat. Quote me on that. Go get it. You got to beat this guy. <laughs> get him. Get an interception. Let's go. First blood on the dude. Come on. That was very Instagram worthy. You're going to take that rant and you're going to package it up on NFL Network Instagram. They're going to put it out there and you're just going to make it big, big font. You get 72 big point font. font. Big font. <laughs> Man, I want, I want the font. italics and underlines on the word squat, squat. too. I want it right there. Yeah, you're okay? not squat. And, and they know. So if you're a one name guy, yeah, you yeah, don't get Cooper done. Rush. Yeah, yes. Squat. If you don't get Cooper Rush, I'm just calling him, I'm just calling him Rush. Cool. That's nice. his new. Okay, He's one name only. He gets the one name. Workshop it. You're Darius, all right? You got to go get him, Slay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to dig a little bit deeper in these numbers and things. For example, um, you know, when you, here's the here's the question that you have to ask to yourself when you look at the opponent. See, this, and this is where things it, it's almost going down in the rabbit hole too much because, you know, you look at the Cowboys offense and we say, well, you know, they're not scoring a lot of points against these defenses and stuff. But you think about Tampa Bay as a top five defense. You think about Cincinnati as a really good defense. You think about the Giants being a top 10 defense. 
Washington is the only defense in there that's not a top 15. And so when you look at the average type of defense that you're facing, of course, you're going to have less points than if you're playing like, say, you know, the Cardinals that are, let me look here. When you look at the Cardinals that are 22nd, the Commanders that are 27th, and the Lions that are 32nd, the only really good defense you've played is the Jags at 5th. So, you know, that makes a difference. You can score better against the Lion team than you can a Tampa Bay team. And those things have a tendency to skew, skew the numbers. And so we'll see. But, you know, again, they scored 29 against the Jags, you know, which are one of the better defenses. But we'll figure it all out. And um, we definitely have a lot to talk about. Uh, Troy Aikman, actually, I've got a damn Gina update about Troy Aikman and the Cowboys quarterback situation that I've got to work on. And we'll get to that real soon. As always, I appreciate you guys. And you know how we roll. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing.